Some games get old after the first installment, but Animal Crossing keeps bringing us more and more to grow our interest, and also grow our love for these characters. So we've come back with even more facts about this beloved game. From axes to bees to dancing doctors, Animal Crossing keeps the fun high and activities endless. Hi, I'm Nikki with the Leaderboard, and we're here to learn more about our favorite otters, turtles, beavers, and more. So get your nets and fishing rods ready, cause we're catching 107 more facts about Animal Crossing. Let's get started. Number 1. In Japan, Animal Crossing games are known by the title Animal Force. Yes, we mentioned this in our 107 Animal Crossing facts. What we didn't mention was the localized title, Animal Crossing. It's actually a reference to the signs posted on roads to protect local wildlife. Number 2. Like Animal Crossing Wild World, City Folk, and New Leaf, GameCube Animal Crossing actually has a subtitle, Population Growing. Not many people use the subtitle when referring to the game, but it is there. Though we're also going to ditch the subtitle for the rest of this 107, and just call it Animal Crossing. Number 3. Commercials for Animal Crossing were done in live action. The ads created a fake reality show where four player avatars lived together. Kinda like the TV show Big Brother. Hey, I'd watch that over The Bachelor. Number 4. Even though his favorite food is fish, Wendell the Walrus will eat almost anything when he's hungry. Like Kirby but more mammalian. However, in Animal Forest for the Nintendo 64, he'll only eat fish. Jeez, picky eater. Number 5. In the Japanese version of Animal Crossing 4 GameCube, you can get into Tom Nook's shop after hours. If you hit the door with a shovel, the door will open, and Tom Nook will be there in his pajamas. Tom Nook obviously isn't happy about this intrusion, so the player can only buy and sell items as a result. And any item they try to buy will also be sold with a 20% price hike. That's the price you pay for convenience, or inconvenience. Number 6. In the original Animal Crossing, all players wore a hat by default. This included certain hats that gave the player horns. This feature was gradually phased out as the series continued. What, they weren't one size fits all? Number 7. Most of the special characters in the Animal Crossing series are species that don't appear anywhere else other than the game they premiere in. This includes Joan the Boar, Gracie the Giraffe, Wendell the Walrus, and Pascal the Otter. This was probably done so they would stand out from the rest of the villagers. Number 8. There were only two characters in the game who appear in Wild World and City Folk, but not in New Leaf. These are Champ the Monkey and Caitlin the Cat. It's always the cute ones. Number 9. Monkey characters characters were always present in Animal Crossing games, seen managing the train station. Monkey villagers, however, weren't normally available until City Folk. Champ was the only monkey who could live in town in Wild World, and he could only be accessed using tag mode at special distribution stations. Number 10. If you've played any Animal Crossing game past Wild World, you'll definitely know that Mr. Rossetti has a brother, but in the GameCube title, it was much less apparent unless you really loved resetting your game. Mr. Rossetti's brother, Don Rossetti, can be seen the fifth time the player resets. Don acts notably calmer than his brother, especially in City Folk. In both City Folk and New Leaf, he can be seen at the Rossetti Surveillance Center. Number 11. There's a special NPC who only appears in Animal Crossing City Folk for the Wii. Serena the Chihuahua is the goddess of the fountain who initially appears in the form of a statue. She comes to life when a player throws an axe into the middle of the fountain and proceeds to ask the player a series of questions, in which she may give the player a silver or golden axe. That's pretty nice of her considering an axe was just thrown at her. Number 12. Serena's entire character references the fairy tale of the Honest Woodsman, which is about a man who drops an axe into water. He's offered both a golden axe and his plain axe, and is asked which one is his. When he answers honestly, he is given both as a reward for not lying. See? Honesty truly is the best policy. Number 13. Serena doesn't appear in New Leaf, but she is referenced. While talking to a character with a peppy personality, the player will sometimes be asked what kind of axe they'd want from a fountain goddess. Number 14. Your loyal mayor assistant Isabel is known as Shizu in Japan. This is a play on the dog breed that she resembles, a Shih Tzu. I still can't picture her being anything else other than a bell bag with arms and legs. Number 15. While Isabel and Digby don't have similar sounding names in North America, it changes depending on where you play. In Italy, the two are known as Fufi and Fofo, while France calls them Marie and Max. Once again, English follows no rules. Number 16. If you're an art buff, spotting Red's counterfeit paintings is pretty easy work. But 
If you aren't, I guess it's time to look online. It's worth mentioning that these paintings and statues are counterfeits of real world masterpieces. So if Blathers gives you the big N.O., just know that means you need to pay more attention to art history class in school. Some works of art don't have a counterfeit counterpart, like the nice, common, and flowery painting in New Leaf. So if Red's selling, you should be buying those. Number 17. While Red's wonderful counterfeit works of art are indeed copies of real world works, the actual names for each aren't present. For example, the Mona Lisa is referred to as Famous Painting, and the girl with a pearl earring is referred to as Wistful Painting. Number 18. Like most of the characters in Animal Crossing, Dr. Shrunk's name is a pun. Shrunk is a psychologist, with his name being a pun on shrink, a popular slang term for mental health professionals, like psychiatrists and psychologists. Number 19. Dr. Shrunk can teach you a variety of emotional animations at Club LOL, hence the name. In total, Dr. Shrunk can teach you 39 different emotional animations, ranging from a sneeze to a bursting out in laughter. Once Dr. Shrunk is finished with the emotions, he teaches you a special dance, which he refers to as the Shrunk Funk Shuffle. A dancing doctor? Yes, please. Number 20. If you ever use Dr. Shrunk's emotions around another character, there's a slight chance that they'll imitate your actions or react to them. This applies to dancing as well, which means that doing the Shrunk Funk Shuffle will cause other characters to dance with you. You'll never have to dance alone ever again. Number 21. Dogs have always appeared as a species in Animal Crossing. The villagers seem to be the same breed but with a few small differences. Benjamin, Bia, Biscuit, Bones, Cherry, Cookie, Daisy, Goldie, Lucky, Mac, Maddie, Marcel, Parsha, Shep, and Walker, you name them. However, special dog characters like Serena, Digby, Isabel, Harriet, and KK are clearly different breeds. Number 22. In New Leaf, Timmy and Tommy Nook are introduced as Tom Nook's two young nephews who help run his shops. Coincidentally, Timmy and Tommy are also the names of the troublemaking twin boys in the cartoon Arthur. If I ever have twins, remind me not to name them Timmy and Tommy. Number 23. In different versions of New Leaf, Timmy and Tommy have equally matching names depending on the adapted language. This includes Marco and Mirko in Italian, Tendo and Nendo in Spanish, and in German the Nooks are referred to as Nepper and Schlepper, both of which are words that refer to con men. This has a not so nice implication about the little Nooks. Number 24. According to their amiibo cards, Timmy and Tommy were both born on June 7th, making them Geminis. The sign Gemini is represented by twins. Coincidence? Number 25. In the game New Leaf, one of the stores that the Nook shop can be upgraded to is called TIY. This is a reference to DIY or do-it-yourself home projects meant for people to be able to do themselves. Guess that means no customer service from them. Number 26. Leaf the Sloth is the owner of the gardening store in New Leaf. His name is an allusion to the title, as L-E-I-F Leaf sounds like L-E-A-F. In Japanese, he's instead called Reiji. When it's written out in katakana, it resembles the English word lazy. Makes sense since sloths are slower moving animals. Number 27. The Bunny Day character Zipper T Bunny isn't an actual rabbit. If you listen closely to the way the character talks, it's actually another character in costume doing their job. Wait, is that a zipper I see in the back? Number 28. There's only one way to catch a bee, and it's not pretty. The player has to shake the trees in town until a nest falls out. The bees will chase you and you have to perform the right reflexes to catch them in your net. If you fail, well, you get stung then it's Benadryl for you. Number 29. Besides bees, a few other creatures can really hurt the player when trying to catch them. This includes scorpions and tarantulas, who will chase the player if they're equipped with a net. Both of these can attack the player, causing them to pass out and wake up in front of their house. Number 30. They're not impossible to catch though. Players can use the tiptoe feature by holding your net while walking to sneak up on tarantulas and scorpions without being chased. That is, if they don't see you. Just be careful though, because they can run away into the water. And if you keep being chased, try finding them without your net being equipped. Number 31. The good news is that the bee stains can be fixed with medicine. It can be purchased once a day from the local nook shop to instantly fix any swelling. Or if you're lucky, one of your Uchi villagers will give you medicine if you talk to them with a not so pretty face. This medicine can also be used to cure sick villagers. Number 32. All villagers usually follow the same template model depending on what animal they are based on. Deer villagers, however, are an exception, as boys will have antlers and girls won't. Number 33. Many of the games contain an anteater villager named Serrano, who is a reference to the famous French figure Serrano de Bergerac. They definitely got de Bergerac's nose right with Serrano. Number 34. Many of the characters have names based on food that relate to their species. This includes a cow named Patty, a chicken named Benedict, and a duck named Pate. Cute idea, but seems a little morbid. Number 35. The bunny characters Chrissy and Francine are very similar in appearance. They both have polka dot designs and dresses, just in different colors. The two appeared together on the 
cover for the song Bubblegum KK, one of my favorites. Introducing our newest pop princesses. Number 36. The two don't just look alike though. According to the Japanese website for City Folk, Chrissy and Francine are sisters. They have different personalities too, with Chrissy being peppy and Francine being snooty. Reminds me of another pair of sisters. Number 37. The player character has a history with the sea bass. Upon catching one in the GameCube title, they will say, I caught a sea bass. See? Bass. In Wild World, they will say, not again. In City Folk, it's not you again. And in New Leaf, it's what? You again? The player has a good reason to be upset because sea bass are one of the most common fish in the game. They can be caught during any season of the year and at any time of the day. They're not very valuable either. Poor guys. Number 38. Coelacanths are notorious for being rare in Animal Crossing. They're the only fish in the game that can be caught while it's raining or snowing. However, they can't be caught on the island even if it's raining. Number 39. Your character is fully aware of how rare coelacanths are. Upon catching the species in New Leaf, they'll exclaim, HOLY FISH STICKS! in huge text. They ought to be excited because a coelacanth sells for 15,000 bells. Number 40. New Leaf introduced Brewster's newly owned cafe, The Roost. The Roost is a species reference. Brewster is shown to be a pigeon, and Roost is a place where birds go to rest. You can say The Roost is his roost. Ha! <laughs> Number 41. According to Brewster, the ideal temperature for coffee is 170 75.38 degrees. This comes out to be a little over 79 degrees Celsius. In other words, scorching hot. Dude, you're gonna burn your beak, Brewster. Number 42. Almost every character in Animal Crossing has their own favorite coffee order for the roost. These are often related to their personalities. Isabel likes a mocha with lots of milk and sugar, while Mr. Rossetti takes his black. Gives you a good idea of the personality spectrum we're dealing with here. Not to mention, helps you earn those special items for working part-time at the roost. Number 43. All the characters on Tortimer's Island are Kappas, which are green turtles. All are related to Cap'n, the snazzy pirate hanging on the island. Leonie behind the counter is Cap'n's wife. Leia on the floor is his daughter. And Graham selling stuff is his mother. Talk about the beach life slowing you down. Number 44. Both Cap'n's daughter and wife had the word lei in their name. This is a reference to a floral lei, a garland given in Hawaii as a gift to be worn, as the island has a Hawaiian theme. This is also seen in their clothes, which have tropical hibiscus flowers on them. Aloha! Number 45. Leonie wears a flower on her right ear. According to some traditions, it means that she's actually still single. Number 46. Layla works at the island as a young merchant who will buy items off of you. Be careful though because she only pays 1 20th of the actual price for any item you give her. <laughs> ripoff. Number 47. Reese and Cyrus are the husband and wife duo who run the retail shop and are the only alpacas in the game and the entire series. If you aren't familiar with alpacas, they're a llama-like animal loved for its fluffy coat and capable of warming our hearts. Number 48. In Japan, Reese and Cyrus are named Lisa and Kaizu, respectively. The way this is pronounced is a play on the Japanese word recycle, which is what players do in their shop. Cyrus's Japanese name is also a play on Kaizo Suru, which references Cyrus's job repairing things for the player. Number 49. Italy isn't afraid of the obvious. Over there, Reese is instead simply known as alpaca. Cyrus is known as merino, which is the name of a kind of sheep. This is taken up a notch in Spain, where Cyrus is known as al, while Reese is known as paca. Keeping it simple. Number 50. Alpaca, arupaca, or parkers. In Japan, the shop retail is known as R parkers, which references the Japanese pronunciation for alpaca. Number 51. Moving on to villagers, let's talk about some species. We've got frogs, horses, alligators, bears and cubs, but some of our favorite villagers aren't quite the respective species. Drago the alligator is a dragon, Ribot is a robot frog, Stitches has patchwork fabric for a teddy bear look, and Julian the horse is the only unicorn in the series. And what about Lucky? Is he undead or just clumsy? Number 52. The alligator character Alfonso wears an especially distinct default shirt. When he first moves into your town, he'll be seen wearing a red shirt with Mario's signature M symbol on it. Shout out to the classics. Number 53. The shirt is referred to in-game as the Big Bro shirt, referencing Mario being older than Luigi. To top it all off, his catchphrase is, it's a B, in reference to Mario's signature line. Die Hard fan much? Number 54. Continuing the trend of NPCs having punny 
referential names. We have Traveling Bird Gulliver. A traveler with the name Gulliver? Sounds familiar, right? Well, that's because Gulliver is a reference to the classic book, Gulliver's Travels, which is about a man who, wait for it, travels. Number 55. Have you ever tried planting a coconut or a banana only to have it wilt and die immediately, symbolizing your failure as a gardener? Yeah, me too. Well, there's a reason why these particular fruit don't make it past a second of life. Any fruit that grows on a palm tree, like say, a coconut or banana, must be planted on the beach. If these trees are planted in the grass, they'll never grow. Number 56. Whoever said money doesn't grow on trees obviously hasn't played Animal Crossing. If you use a golden shovel and plant a bag of bells, there's a tiny chance that it'll grow into a money tree. When it grows, it will bear three bags of bells that carry the amount originally buried. I really wish I had one of these. Number 57. In Animal Crossing for GameCube, planting a money tree differs quite a bit. Players can actually use a regular shovel to get a tree, but they have to bury the bells in one of the shiny spots that show up in the town daily. Strategic planting. Number 58. Not every KK Slider song has a KK in its title. Some of them are regular song names, including ones like I Love You, Neapolitan, and Stale Cupcakes. I'm sure KK doesn't need to label all of his songs to stay popular. Number 59. When you buy some KK Slider albums, you might notice that there's some random text written on them. The words aren't Japanese nor English. This seems to be the written version of Animalese, the in-game language. How come they don't offer that in school? Number 60. In Wild World and City Folk, players can change the language settings to determine how the characters speak. These are Animalese, Bebebees, and Silence. With BBBs, characters speak in a more neutral beeping sound, like the sound that plays when text is displayed for catching a fish or a bug. With Silence, characters make no noise at all. Number 61. Some furniture can only be found under very special circumstances. There's obviously the ones found in fortune cookies and Japanese exclusive items. But furniture sets like the egg furniture can only be acquired on bunny day. And snowman furniture, which can be gained from building a snowman in the winter. And then there's also balloon furniture, introduced in New Leaf and is only available from shooting down those presents floating in the sky. Number 62. Animal Crossing title names can vary based on the country. In Japan, Europe, and Oceania, city folk is known as Let's Go to the City. In Wild World, in Japan, is known as Animal Forest, Come Here. Number Number 63. New Leaf is named in North America after the phrase, turn over a new leaf, reflecting all the changes from previous games. In Japan, however, it's known as Animal Forest Jump Out. It's also known as Animal Forest Pop Out in South Korea. Number 64. When you start New Leaf, Rover is with you on a train to town. Rover says, haven't done this much traveling by train since 2002 or so. Man, that's weird. Longtime Animal Crossing fans should catch this reference, since it's referring to the original Animal Crossing, where you and Rover share a train ride towards your town. In Wild World, you take a taxi, and in City Folk, you go by bus. So enjoy the train ride. Maybe the next game will be by Uber. Number 65. As of New Leaf, the species with the least villagers is the octopus. There are only three, Marina, Octavian, and Zucker. It must be hard being an octopus on land. Number 66. For the first time in New Leaf, bear species of villagers was divided into two sets. The standard bear, consisting of characters like Kurt and Tutu, will be larger in size. The bear cub characters, like Pudge and Maple, are closer to the player in size. You calling me short? Number 67. Players at Shampoodles have to decide the colors based on different descriptions rather than the actual color when getting a new hairstyle. This includes angel wings for white and clear sky for light blue. Number 68. Players can also decide their eye color based on certain descriptions. They're divided into three categories. Vast sky, large trees, and endless ocean. These all give variations of brown, green, and blue. Maybe then someone can tell you, you have beautiful large tree eyes. Number 69. LaBelle was originally known as Label, but she adopted the name LaBelle as a fancier name for her new career. I support this life choice because if my name was Label, I would change it to LaBelle too. Number 70. The winter season is lovely because of all the lights on cedar trees, but if you plant a cedar tree too close to a public works project, the cedar tree will not have any lights on it. Number 71. If you get Harriet to style your hair 15 times, she'll give you an option for opposite gender hairstyles. Number 72. The Mermaid series is a furniture set that only starts to appear in New Leaf. The only way to furnish your house with this series is to purchase the set at the island gift shop. The items that are added to the shop change daily and can be totally random, so it might take a while to get every single piece. In the island gift shop line of furniture is the Cabana series as well. Although not new to the Animal Crossing series, it is exclusive to the island gift shop in New Leaf. Number 73. Things purchased at the island gift shop can't just be bought with bells either. Players can only buy the items with 
medals, which can be earned by completing Tortimer's Special Island Tour games. You have to work for those souvenirs, I guess. How many of you out there have a toy hammer? Anyone? Number 74. In New Leaf, your player avatar can actually get a tan. This only happens if they stay outside during the summer season with no hat or head accessories. The player can also visit the island during the day for that summer sun all year round. Funny because I only managed to get a sunburn. Number 75. Everyone knows that when you cut down a tree in Animal Crossing, a stump remains with the tree rings exposed. We have mentioned previously that you can get unique patterns like a Triforce or a butterfly when cutting a tree down. And using a regular or golden axe, there's a slight chance you will get something other than a normal stump. But if you use that trusty silver axe, you will always get a special pattern. There are six for oak trees and six for cedar. Number 76. Many of the events characters judge contests that directly relate to their species. The bug off is judged by a chameleon because it's a species that mostly eats insects. The fishing contest is judged by a beaver, an animal known for being a fantastic swimmer. Number 77. A running joke in the fishing contest is that the beaver judge Chip will eat any fish he's given. But if Chip were an actual beaver, he'd be a pretty strict vegetarian. Number 78. Animal Crossing gave players eight different designs for boy and girl characters to choose from. In New Leaf, there are up to 13 faces available for boys and for girls. Customizing has come a long way. Number 79. Most fish in Animal Crossing appear in various sizes from the same shadow underwater. This changes, however, when a player encounters a big fish like a shark. In this case, the fish's fin will be sticking up out of the water. Cue Jaws music. Oh, it's just an ocean sunfish. Number 80. Animal Crossing had e-reader support. In Japan, the name of the game changed to reflect the feature and was known as Animal Force E+, to clear up any confusion. Number 81. Before there were amiibo cards, there were several different e-reader card types that could be used in Animal Crossing for GameCube. These included villager cards, sibling cards, town tunes, minigame cards, and design cards. The cards were used to enhance the Animal Crossing experience in many different ways. Yeah, that's a lot of cards. Number 82. Villager cards give letters from specific villagers along with an item. Sibling cards would have codes on both sides with related characters on them, like Pelly and Phyllis. Town Toon cards would give you special town tunes. Minigame cards would give you NES games. And design cards would offer special patterns. Number 83. The e-reader card mechanic would find its way to modern day Animal Crossing gaming by way of amiibo cards. Well, and amiibo figures. Too. In Animal Crossing Happy Home Designer for the Nintendo 3DS and Animal Crossing Amiibo Festival for the Wii U, Amiibo support was the main feature. Animal Crossing Amiibo cards, the first cards in the Amiibo line, were released on September 25, 2015, while Amiibo figures were released on November 13, 2015. There are currently four series of the cards. Number 84. As of this 107 facts video, there's a total of 400 Amiibo cards available for Animal Crossing over the span of four waves. If you really want to catch them all, sorry, wrong series, better start now. If you want something more manageable, switch to Amiibo figures. Number 85. Animal Crossing Happy Home Designer is a spin-off game released in 2015, revolving around designing the villagers' homes. Instead of acting as mayor, the player works as a new employee for the Happy Home Academy. So if you'd like a break from the responsibility of mayor, relax and exercise your interior design skills. Number 86. Lottie, a pink otter who works at the Happy Home Academy, introduced in Happy Home Designer, is known for wearing a lot of makeup. And Lyle, her uncle, mentioned that it worries him a little bit. She looks so different without it. So much that Digby asks if she's feeling alright when she forgets to put it on. Savage. Number 87. This lack of makeup is actually visible on Lottie's in-game model. In her standard appearance, her eyes are big and she has thick eyelashes. In some easter eggs, however, the player can see her eyes without makeup. This reveals that her eyes are actually very small. The magic of makeup. Number 88. Tataka Song is an easter egg that is well known amongst Nintendo fans, and it's been hidden in several installments of Animal Crossing. Happy Home Designer is no different. If you have the DJ KK Amiibo card, you can scan it to enter his house. If you place the DJ turntable in his home, Tataka's song will start playing. Number 89. One event in the Animal Crossing Amiibo Festival revolves around a rainy day causing the characters to stay in and play video games. The game they're playing? Amiibo Festival. There seems to be some kind of weird dimensional loop going on here. Number 90. In Happy Home Designer, one of the board games that the player can put into a home is Amiibo Festival. Number 91. A slight easter egg references Mario Kart can be found in Happy Home Designer. In the handbook, you can play sounds in the sound scenery options. If you play city sounds, you can hear go-karts and even a Koopa shell. As long as there's no bananas. Number 92. In fall 2016, it was announced that New Leaf is receiving Amiibo support 
support. The free update allows players to use the amiibo figures and cards on the 3DS game to expand the game even more. An update for a 2012 game in 2016? That's awesome. Number 93. Similar to how Happy Home Designer used amiibo to reach specific villagers, the free update allows players to use amiibo to bring in specific villagers into their town to visit via mobile home. The villagers that come to visit might even feel prompted to move in. Oh hey neighbor! Number 94. To make sure everyone's able to enjoy the new update with or without internet, Nintendo announced Animal Crossing New Leaf Welcome Amiibo, a new version of New Leaf for purchase that includes the added Amiibo functionalities packed in the cartridge. Number 95. Animal Crossing New Leaf is also introducing a new guest to the town. She and her crew won't be running around, but they will be on some pretty cool clothing and furniture for purchase. So it's like real life. Isn't Hello Kitty a girl and not a cat? So she really wouldn't fit in this town anyway. Number 96. In addition, new amiibo cards were announced alongside the update. This new wave, which came out of nowhere, is adding 50 new cards, each featuring a brand new villager to New Leaf, some returning from past games, like Boyd and Hopkins, who've only appeared in Animal Force E+, as well as the interior design of that villager's mobile home. Number 97. The update also allows the use of amiibo from other franchises. For example, using Splatoon's Callie and Marie amiibo, bring in Callie and Marie villager doppelgangers. Number 98. Hey, who's that ghost in the new update? Wisp? For those of you who don't know, Wisp has been in the series except for City Folk. He would help recolor your house roof and remove weeds in your town. It looks like Leaf took his job, but we are happy to see his return in the new Leaf update. Side note, doesn't he look like a Koopa Clown car? Side side note, I hope Pierre from Animal Forest E Plus comes back in the update. Now he looks like a Koopa Clown car. Number 99. Even though they offer many Animal Crossing collectibles, look no further than Good Smile Company's Nendoroid line for everyone's favorite mayor assistant, Isabel. She is available in both her summer outfit as well as her winter outfit, accompanied with alternate expressions and effect pieces. The summer version was actually re-released in 2016. The Nendoroid line totally works for the Animal Crossing design, so I'm hoping they make more characters. Number 100. Following the success of Mitomo, Nintendo announced in 2016 that an Animal Crossing app was in development. One of the goals Kimishima made for the Animal Crossing mobile app was to create a connection between the console games and mobile devices. The apps will offer a new mode of play while also making the original games more fun. Hmm, Animal Crossing mobile homes, mobile phones, eh? Number 101. Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze references New Leaf. One of the passive animations Donkey Kong has is of him playing a Nintendo 3DS. For a few seconds, the 3DS plays the New Leaf 3PM music. Thanks for the shout out, DK. Number 102. The anime based off a of wild world in 2006, Dobutsu no Mori, didn't portray every single villager found in the games. Some villagers that made the cut include Margie the Elephant, Apollo the Eagle, Whitney the Wolf, Alfonso the Alligator, and Rosie the Cat, to name a few. It's great seeing some of these villagers in an anime style. Number 103. Villager was put into the Super Smash Bros. series for the first time as a playable character in the series' fourth installment. While his primary appearance is the design with the number one shirt, he can be changed to reflect multiple player avatars, including female villagers. While Villager is the first Animal Crossing character to be a playable character in Smash, he He's not the first time the game has appeared in Smash at all. The Smash series contains Animal Crossing trophies, stickers, and levels that reference the game. Number 104. Even though at the time of, New Leaf was the latest version of Animal Crossing, and the latest Super Smash Bros., Villager's design doesn't quite reflect its New Leaf appearance. The Villager is smaller in size, similar to the player's avatars in previous Animal Crossing games. This is slightly strange as Tom Nook appears in the trailer in his New Leaf outfit, donning his Argyle sweater. Continuity, guys. Number 104. 5. Villager's move reflects aspects of the Animal Crossing games. He can plant a tree, water it, and axe it down, use a slingshot in the air, grab opponents with a net, and pocket projectiles as part of his attack set. Like pocketing trees! 4 stock, final destination, no items, trees only. Number 106. It wouldn't be a town without some good old geology. Diplodocus is one of the dinosaur species that the players can dig up in the second, third, and fourth game. Initially, they were calling it a seismosaurus, but we're going to let that slide. And number 107. What? This whole time you haven't played Animal Crossing New Leaf? Well, before the update comes out, you can get New Leaf for the discounted price of $19.99. Since the game has joined, Nintendo selects titles, both for retail or digital download. Thank you so much for watching 107 more facts about Animal Crossing. Which villager is your favorite? 
comment below and let us know. We have new videos dropping every week, so let us know what game you want us to cover next. And if you like getting more from your game, subscribe to the leaderboard where we help you game smarter.